spring is a kind of a coiled wire who executes simple harmonic motion on a slight uh, disturbance. So how does it looks like? I just want to draw a diagram for you. To a fixed support, there is a spring like this. At the bottom of the spring, you can have a load, say some mass. So its weight always acts in downward direction. That pulls the spring downward. So that spring expands the little. Where value? Spring has a property, characteristic property of trying to get back to its original location, original position, because of a force that it has inside called something like restoring force. So more the load, more the restoring force within the elastic limit. So the applied force equal to the restoring force is directly proportional to the elongation of the spring. More the load that you apply, more the restoring force and more elongation also happens. The negative sign indicates that the restoring force and extension are, are happening in the opposite direction. So it is a simple harmonic motion. We will derive expression for the time period in other video. We are not talking about it, right? So to eliminate that proportionality, we can put a constant k. That q is called as spring constant. It is called as a spring constant. This spring constant k depends obviously on nature of the spring. It also depends on length of the spring. What do you mean by that? Longer the length, if the spring is longer, say, it's easy to, say, bend it or twist it under the same kind of a force when compared with a shorter spring. So what we can say is, easy to bend means spring constant is less. So spring constant is inversely proportional to length. Means more the length, it is easy to bend it, that means it has less spring constant. So k into L is equal to constant. So spring constant is inversely proportional to length. Let's try to understand the meaning of that in a little a different way. Say for example, I have a spring whose length is L, spring constant is k, we have applied a force on it. Now, let's assume we have divided that spring into two parts. That L has two lengths now, L1 and L2. Um, as it is having two lengths, respect to, it behaves like two springs now because I have assumed like I have broken the spring into two pieces. So, the piece L1 can have a length of spring constant K1, other can have a length of spring constant K2. Now what happens is, as I, wrote, as I told earlier, total spring constant K and total length L can be written like K1 L1, or that is also equal to K2 L2. F is same in all of them. In the place of that K of length, I can even write L1 plus L2 equal to K1 L1. That's equal to k to a. So if a total spring constant is known and total lengths are known for you, what is the new spring constant? K1 is how much if somebody asks you. You can write k of L1 plus L2 by L1. Or k2 can be written like k of L1 plus L2. This L2 come to the denominator. The spring constants can be found depending on how do these springs are cut. Say for example, if somebody say, if spring is cut to middle, means what? The total length is L, 
it is divided into two parts l by 2 and l by 2 then what will be the new spring constant of each piece k1 is equal to k l1 plus l2 is the total length l by l1 is l by 2. so what happens k into l into 2 by l l and l will cancel so k1 is equal to 2k so you can understand that this is a spring is cut to half of its length its spring constant gets doubled which validates the same that what i am saying like spring constant is inversely proportional to the length of the spring that's an important point of all this discussion that's how you want to understand you need to understand the basics of spring constant with respect to the length of the spring right thank you for watching